So let's go through the materials for this project. You should have two pieces of wire, a keychain ring, and a lot of beads. For simplicity's sake, today we will be pairing up the beads blue and yellow and red and green. And you also want to count up your black beads and your white beads. And you're going to want to pair those up as well because those are our phosphate sugars. They're going to make our phosphate sugar backbone and you need to have the exact same number of each one. So through the magic of video editing, I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. Give me a second. Yay! Okay, so now with your wires, you might already have wires that have been sort of color-coded on the ends for you, but if they haven't, take one of your two wires and using a black marker, color the end of it so that you have a way of telling the wires apart. So we said we're going to pair up red and green and blue and yellow together. You can decide in your own color code what you want each of those colors to represent, but remember that A and T always pair together and G and C always pair together. I'm going to have green be G, so that would make red C and let's say that yellow is A and blue is T. All right, so hopefully you've arranged the contents of your bag. You can put the keychain ring and any extra beads off to the side. You should have equal numbers of red and green beads, equal numbers of blue and yellow beads. You may not have all the same numbers of all the colors, but as long as you have the same number of blues and yellows and the same number of reds with greens, you'll be okay. You also want to make sure you have plenty of black and white beads. The black beads are going to represent phosphates, the white beads are going to represent sugars, and you're going to need a phosphate and a sugar for every single one of your bases. So with those wires again, you might already have them colorful on the ends, but if you haven't, take a moment and color the ends of one of the wires with a Sharpie. That will make things a lot easier. So you're going to start with your plain white wire, and on this plain white wire you're going to put a phosphate and a sugar on one side any base pair of your choosing, followed by another phosphate and sugar. So you should have phosphate, sugar, base, phosphate, sugar, base on both sides. And you're going to want to pull that even, and you'll need to do this throughout the whole process. You want to pull even on the wire so that the ends stay about the same length. And once you've got that, you can set that down. Then you're going to pick up the wire that has the ends colorful like this, and you're going to pick your next base pair. I'm picking blue and yellow, but you can pick whatever you want. That's the beauty of DNA. Whatever you decide to be in the code is in the code as long as you match up the base pairs together. So again, with this one, I'm making sure that the wires are approximately the same length because we don't want them to get all wonky and be different lengths. This part is kind of tricky. So this first set of pairs already has their phosphate and sugar, but the next set of pairs, see how I've nested them together. This inside set of pairs needs a phosphate and sugar, and that's what's going to hold this whole thing together. So take a moment, make sure your wires are the same length. As we keep doing this, the wires that are colorful on the ends and the wires that are plain will become different lengths. As long as your sharpied pair of wires is the same length and the white pair of wires is the same length, you'll be okay. I'm going to take sugar next. I'm going to take a sugar bead, a white bead, and put it on the white wire, white bead on white wire. And I'm going to take another sugar bead and I'm going to put that on the other white wire. So we're gonna kind of have this mantra throughout, white bead, white wire, black bead through both. So both wires go through the black beads. So I've got my first base pair, I've got the, it's sugar, it's phosphate, and I've added another sugar. The phosphate is gonna help clinch this all together. So remember I said white bead, white wire, or white wire through white bead, both wires through the black bead. We're gonna pick up our phosphates, our black bead, and I'm going to put both wires through it. Like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This, the first time you do it, it's a little tricky, but as long as you keep the wires tight, it'll be a nice keychain at the end when you're done. So now I've got the wires pretty much held together by this black bead. I'm gonna pull that as tight as I can and I'm gonna double check my wires. Yes, the white wire is shorter than the black wire. That's because it started lower down here. The thing we wanna make sure is that one side of the white wire isn't way ahead of the other side. So see, mine were a little bit off, so I'm gonna pull one side to make it even. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the black wire. So now to put the next set of base pairs. This is where I'm going to need some bigger props. Pretend that these are my beads. That for this next part, to make the rest of the beads go sideways, we have to put the wires through them this way. 
Do you see how my fingers are both going through the beads in opposite directions? My fingers are going one way through both and the other way through both, like that. That's what we need to do with our wires, make them go through both to make the beads stand up like this. I'll show you. So I've selected this next pair to be my next base pair. And as I go, I'm gonna keep checking to make sure that my wires of the same color are the same length. So remember that mantra about how I said that the black bead gets both wires on it? We're also going to be putting double beads on the black wires in the middle of the keychain. So just like I showed you it before with the beads like that. Oh no, I messed up my lines, that's okay. I showed the beads like that. That's what we're gonna do for the next step. And I promise the tricky part is almost over. I'm gonna put my next base pair on one of the black wires. I'm gonna take the other black wire and stick it through in the opposite direction. Like that. And then I'm gonna pull it down to push the beads down in the middle. A little easier said than done. You always wanna go back and make sure that the wires are the same length. So right now, my white wires are okay, but my black wires are two different lengths. And I wanna fix that now. So to fix that, I need to pull on one side and then pull on the other side to even it out. Now I pulled too much. So I'm gonna go back the other way. So like I said, the tricky part's almost over. I've got bases, sugar, phosphate, bases, sugar, phosphate. I need sugar and phosphate for these guys too. So on the white wire, I'm going to put a sugar. And on the white wire over here, I'm gonna put a sugar. And what else do I need? I've got my sugar and my base, but I need a phosphate. That phosphate is gonna go through both wires. And the same thing on the other side, both wires. All right, cool. Now we're ready for the next rung. Again, I'm going to take my next base pairs. I'm gonna do red and green again, and I'm sticking both on one of the black wires. The other black wire is going to go through the opposite direction. Again, we're doing that. So they're going the wires are going in opposite directions through the beads. It's going to get easier as you keep adding base pairs. So I'm gonna tighten this down. Hopefully you're making less of a mess with your beads than I'm making with mine. Okay, do you remember what our next step is? We've got our bases, we need to add a sugar. So white bead on white wire, white bead on white wire. And to complete our nucleotide, we also need a phosphate. That phosphate bead, that black bead, is going to go through both. Gonna get both wires through there. Same story on the other side, both wires through there. So we're gonna keep this pattern up until we run out of beads. You'll notice that my wires are getting shorter. The black wire is getting shorter than the white wire. That's okay. You're gonna basically just keep going with this pattern until you run out of beads or run out of wire. Just make sure that for each rung of the ladder, you have a phosphate and a sugar for it. And you'll keep going like this until you get the wires that are a little bit too short, at which point you'll start to twist them up around your keychain. And your keychain will probably end up looking like that, but to make it look really cool and like a real double helix, you wanna twist it. See, wasn't too hard. And any extra beads that you have left over, I will gladly take to use in another class. Thanks so much for watching.